pastor calls to turn small town into Christian theocracy. The Guardian recently published an article detailing their lengthy investigation into an ultra-conservative evangelical church in Moscow, Idaho. So when we refer to Moscow in the story, we're talking about a town in Idaho. We're not talking about Russia. Okay, just to be clear. According to the report, the church's leadership has openly announced their desire to run a theocracy. Douglas Wilson, the controversial lead pastor of Christ Church, Christ Church is the name of the church, not the place in New Zealand, um, intends to, quote, make Moscow a Christian town through faithful and robust covenant renewal. The Guardian report claims that the church gains power by criticizing public officials over public health mandates, accumulating land and businesses, and building institutions in parallel to the local secular government. Despite uh, Christ Church activities being limited to Moscow, Idaho, its umbrella organization is slowly seeping into mainstream its way into mainstream politics. Wilson also drops dangerous messages in his blogs and online ministries, of, often comparing lawful public health ordinances to enslavement and saying, quote, we are not yet in hot civil war. We are with shooting and all, but we are in a cold war civil war. End quote. This is why, even though I'm a full on libertarian, I completely support very, you know, very robust, very efficient government social safety nets, right? I mean, nothing this guy is doing is illegal. He should be able to provide services, right? Under religious branding. But what I want is for it to be unsuccessful because there's something so much better being provided by the government. This is why, you know, this is why, like, when it comes to religions trying to monopolize charity and support, like, what, what kind of services does this guy provide? Like, what is he doing? Well, he leads a church and he publishes books, yeah. but he no, but, has yeah. all of these deep connections into the local church ministry as also um as well as the largest private employer of in the city in the town of 25,000 okay, people but how is he how is he how is he starting a like a what they call here a christian theocracy like what is how is he like how is he going to do that like is he going to provide um, services that the government provides i mean he can't have his own police that would be legal no, so um, the the investigation doesn't exactly they this is one thing that I wish they had clarified is what they mean by trying to set up um, alternatives to the secular institutions, because they mainly oh, talk secular. about his um, his his re close relationships with the leaders of the company, the, the town's largest private employer, as well as the influence he has over a local Bible college that's in the area. Oh, God, there you go. Education, a college. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, I mean, to be fair, like, he should be allowed to do that. What we, what, if this is not a theocracy, the problem we have with theocracies is, is that they don't let other ideas compete. Okay. Yes. You know this guy is this guy is competing you know, in is competing with secular institutions in a free society, um, and the fact that he gets to compete makes us not a theocracy. Like so, this is not at all even remotely close to a theocracy. Well, but the issue we have, you know, being, you know, secular institutions not being able to compete with religious ones. That's the first sign that you're in a theocracy, right? Um. If we want to defeat this guy's Christian institution, we have to have better secular ones with instead of like trying to shut this guy down. You know what I mean? That's that's how we compete with this guy's ideas. Yes, I'm not trying to claim that he currently has a theocracy. That this is something he openly calls for and pushes for and argues for. So and he, then he says they, the word he uses he uses the word theocracy? Yes. Oh wow. 
in their church materials, like which are found openly. So here's one example. Wilson has repeatedly disavowed any interest in national electoral politics, but Christchurch's eventual aim is that Wilson explicitly describes in, in is what Wilson ex- explicitly describes in 2016 in a 2016 book as theocracy or quote a network of nations bound together by a formal acknowledgement of the lordship of Jesus Christ. End well, quote, delusional. as opposed to secular society run by quote civil governments which are in necessary degrees satanic demonic and influenced by the god of this world who is the devil hell yeah these, and we're winning these beliefs have led christ church into conflicts with local government but additionally wilson and other Ch- christ church members have found a range of local and national institutions which are affiliated with or sponsored by the church and so then it details how the church itself is an unincorporated nonprofit, so they don't have to have their finances as um, openly accountable. And then the entities associated with the church are also unincorporated, like they have a school and they have a publisher. Um, and uh, their anonymous sources are saying that the members have to tithe 10% of their household income, but wealthier members are expected to make even more. But that's not even so he, he has expressed an open desire for theocracy right but that's not necessarily how he's exerting his power now so he like i said he has a lot of influence in um his local church and then there's also yeah. um his son-in-laws who have married into his family also have very senior positions within the church and other influential aspects of this right, town okay. But, but he's not going to be the, able to go on. The main way that he's able to throw his power around and influence, have outsized influence in this town where apparently only like 10% of the people in the town are actually members of this church. But that's still a pretty large amount. Um, is, this is the theocracy. No, it's not. But he has been able to politicize what I am referring to as public health ordinances but when I say that, I want people to think of restrictions related to the sickness that is going around. Um, and I can't oh. say much more because the, the YouTube yeah. uh, is very strict about talking about these kinds of things. Like some of the stuff that he advocates for, I can't even talk about on YouTube because they will think that we're promoting it. Like really, mm-hmm. really dangerous um policies or actions that are directly influenced by his faith and he says so and he has been encouraging um opposition to people in the local town who support that kind of thing push for that kind of thing um and uh just like all these campaigns to push back um what he characterizes as enslavement all right okay okay um yeah i got all of that I just want to mention that this guy is delusional. He's not going to be able to have his theocracy. Uh, anything that he can do, to, any, anything he wants to do that will remotely um, get him closer to be a theocracy would be illegal. He, This guy will not be able to raise an army. He's not going to be able to have his police. Um, he, anything he says that is dangerous, like you said, should be considered like a health hazard and should be, you know, addressed accordingly. And the only thing he get to do with all his connections and money is to create, sec- uh, you know, private institutions um, that are competing with secular ones and come at us i mean come at us you know like and lose uh, you know i mean it's good like he's spending his own personal money on all of this right i mean there's funds from his oh, church and, and church okay good like let let I'm, I'm i'm hoping more christians waste all their money at trying to uh defeat secularism and us demonic people um and waste our money because eventually we're going to win and they're going to lose and they are going to go the way of the dodo so Can I and they could just huh. also just this doesn't necessarily fit into the rest of this story but i have to talk about this because this is wild to me so what? he's controversial for many other positions as well and you are not going to believe um 
the position that he took on this one. In the early 2000s, Wilson received criticism over a book titled Southern Slavery As It Was, which he had co-written in the 1990s uh, with J. Stephen Wilkins. Wilkins is a Louisiana pastor who is a co-founder of the neo-Confederate organization, the League of the South. And this, um, uh, this co-author is also a member of um, Wilson's church's umbrella group. So Protestant denominations have like umbrella organizations that they fall under, right? Um, so they have a relation through their congregations there. The book depicted slavery in the antebellum Southern United States as quote, a relationship based on mutual affection and confidence. Mutual? And yes. And argued Wait, that- does this guy know what slavery means? Mutual? There's nothing mutual. About I mean, if it's mutual, it's technically not slavery, but go on. <laughs> and argued that the enslaved enjoyed, quote, a life of plenty of simple pleasures of food, clothes, and good medical care. Okay, well then let them leave if they want to. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if it's so good, then you don't have to force them to stay. <laughs> so why, then why would you have to? <laughs> <laughs> these people they're like i keep hearing this from so many people including like muslim uh, islam apologists who say like slavery was good under islam i like well if it was so great then give them the option to leave and they won't leave and then it wouldn't be slavery anymore <laughs> like, <what? laughs> this is why does this argument so often used by people who try to wash the whitewash slavery like, but they had it so well. Okay, then they don't need to be slaves. They would voluntarily stay. <laughs> oh God, so dumb. It's uh, so wild. This? Yeah. Secularity is saying, yeah, good news is there are too many secular believers and non-believers that will continue to uphold the secular laws in the United States that won't let it become a theocracy. Bad news is this dude exists. <laughs> Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.